Almost welcome, everyone. Thank you. Let's welcome Esther. Thank you. We shall be live on YouTube. Uh, so many, many people will be watching us live from YouTube. Okay, we are going to start. Just to, I'm just doing some setups here and then we get ready. Just give yourself a bit, side to each other. Uh, I'm just setting up the session, the session from my side, and then we get rolling, we get rolling, 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 rolling. Afternoon is Good afternoon. Okay. Uh... Welcome here. We are right about to start a session. We are right about to start. You welcome my heel. Hi. I'm glad to see you after a long time.
we are right about to start just a few minutes waiting a few a few people to join us and then we get trolling Okay, uh, I'm clear and you guys are seeing me well. Uh, yes, we are. Okay. Are. okay. Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, check check talks. Is this happening? Uh, uh, your voice is not clear. Hello, you're welcome. Can can everyone hear me? If you can hear me, yes. just just you can uh, raise you raise your hand just to show me that you're there. Yeah, so you're welcome to uh, Code Academy uh, 2021 Tech Talks this March. Tech talks are a series of events that happen every every year, every quarter of the year. That means every after three months we have. That means every after three months we have another tech talk, and then after three years we have another one. So uh, tech talks is a series of events that are uh, used for teaching people that usually use for. Uh, Sensitizing the, the public, sensitizing the public about a uh, computer. Usually it's not just about programming, it's basically everything to do with technology, computer, artificial intelligence, and even more stuff. You never know, maybe in the future we could also look at uh, artificial intelligence. But uh, before we get any further, we'd like to have uh, a word of prayer from, from uh, Edward in just about two minutes and then we start we kick off so edward please you can take it on just about five minutes then we'll go A word of prayer pardon thank you for this session i thank you uh, all that we are going to learn from everyone. Uh, this is our understanding. Amen. Okay. Amen. 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 So, uh, you guys are very welcome to this event. 
I'm going to make one request to everyone, just a small request that every one of you puts their video on. We want to know that you're there. We want to at least see real people. We want to know that we are interacting with real people out there. Okay? Yeah. And then thereafter, we, we shall go ahead and look at what we have in these tech talks. But before we go any further, uh, let me introduce myself and every other staff member that's here, they will talk about uh, themselves. My name is Jewel Musumba. I am a programmer, just like many of the, many others that you'll be seeing here. I am a trainer. I train programming at Code Academy Uganda. And yeah, I love programming. So we shall see we shall see all the other uh, trainers as the session goes on. But I guess you have interacted with Edward. I guess most of you have seen Edward and he's also a programmer there. While, uh, while he's also a trainer. Most of you have, how many of you have done scratch here? Okay, Micah. Micah. Who else? Micah, Esther, and who else? I am seeing someone here called uh, called Jethro. Jethro, how are you? Fine, thank you. Okay, have you heard of programming before? Yes. Okay, but you haven't interacted with it, right? Um, no, there's a time I made a game with my one of my cousins on Scratch. Oh, so you know something about Scratch? Yes. Okay. I am seeing other people joining, but uh, you're welcome. Everyone, every one of you that is here, you are my you are so welcome. So uh this event is mainly inspirational, inspirational and motivational, just to show you what programming can do. And if someone started programming at your age, uh, by the time they get to around 20, because I guess uh, not many of you here are above 20 years old. If you started programming right now, only, only the sky is the limit at what you can be when you're when you're 20 or when you're 30 or 40. But uh, most of you are seeing Code Academy Uganda. Uh, Code Academy Uganda is, is the host of this event, just like Edward's account here. What you can see on, on, that, on that account is uh, the logo for Code Academy Uganda. But before we continue, I'm going to talk about it and talk about what we do there, and then we shall dive into, and then we shall dive in straight to uh, the session. So uh, at Code Academy Uganda, we are uh, a computer school. Our offices are in Wandegea, and what we do there is, what we do in Code Academy is basically programming but we do this programming in two main ways. The first one is by uh, educating. And the second one is by making a software. Yeah. It, wouldn't, it wouldn't make sense for us to, to educate, yet we don't practice what we educate. So uh, apart from just having to teach people how to make softwares and games, we also do the things. So uh, among the many courses that we have, we do Scratch, just like I had Jethro say that he has, he has done Scratch before. I, have, I saw Esther put up her hand and also Micah put up his hand. And uh, yeah, I'm seeing others are just joining in. <clears throat> so what we do in Code Academy Uganda is we start with Scratch. We teach you how to program a basic program a basic game, it could be a basic game, it could be a story, it could be an animation using Scratch. And then thereafter, we have other programs like Python, 
where we teach people how to program using more advanced programming languages. Python is just one of the many. Then we also have other courses that are not for, that, that are for people who are a bit, a bit older, about 18 years and above. And there we teach things like web development, app development, mobile app development, and uh, web app development. There are very many things that we do there. So uh, in a nutshell, in a nutshell, that is what Code Academy does. We have worked on a number of projects. If really I, I went into showing you which projects that we have done and what we haven't done, I would be taking up I will be taking up the work of the speakers of this event because I'm sure most of them are going to talk about their personal projects that they have done through Code Academy Uganda. Now I have uh, let me introduce the speakers of today. We have a couple of them here. First of all, we have student speakers the ones who have been with Code Academy Uganda from when we started up to now. And then we also have uh, guest speakers. And then we also have the trainers here, the trainers in Code Academy Uganda. So right in the corner, uh, I don't know whether it is the same order as on your screens there, but we have, uh, so this is what we're going to do. I am going to be mentioning their names and then I'll give them the floor to talk about themselves. First, just to introduce themselves and then later we shall give them the opportunity. And then later when we start, uh, when their turn comes, they will talk more about their session there. Okay, so at this point, we are going to start with uh, Micah. Uh, thank you, teacher Jewel and everyone else. My name is Mike Anangumia. I am 12 years old. I'm 12 years old. I go to Daffodils Primary School. I like coding and I've been doing coding ever since April last year. Uh, this year I decided to do Python because I wanted to learn something new, but I've been doing Scratch most of the time. I've made a few games in Python in Scratch and I'm sure that anyone else would like to join Code Academy Uganda because their, their staff members are friendly and they can teach you anything in coding. So that's what I'd like to say. Thank you and bye. Thank you, Micah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Micah. Wow, that was a very wonderful speech. And then uh, we shall we shall go next to our next student speaker, which is, uh, is Esther. Esther, you have just a few minutes to talk about to introduce yourself, and then we shall we shall think, switch to someone else. Um, thank you, Coach Jewel. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Esther Nakakande, and I'm 15 years old. I go to St. Mary's Boarding Secondary School, Chitende. Um, about the programming and coding, I started doing this last year. That was mid-pandemic. And so far I've loved it and I've loved the teachers. Um, this year I wasn't able to continue with the other like programs like Python. There is also JavaScript. I only did Scratch and also another one called Picto Blocks. But with the ones that I did, I really liked them and enjoyed them. And I hope the other children will also try them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Esther. We also have we also have staff on board. We also have our staff on board. I can see Brenda right here. So uh, Brenda, the floor is yours. Say hi to the congregation and tell them that you're here. Yeah, uh, thank you so much, Apostle uh, Joel. Uh, hi to everyone. I'm Brenda Tigume and I'm a trainer at Code Academy Uganda. 
Yeah, I'm excited uh, to hear uh, for today's event and uh, for the students, thank you for your excellent introduction. Yeah, all the best, thank you. All right, and then uh, we also have our guest of honor right here. His name is uh, Musanje Lewis. He's a developer and he could, because uh, he's also a trainer, you cannot, be a, you cannot be a developer if you cannot train what, what, you, what you know. So yes, Lewis, the floor is yours. You can say hi to, to everyone that is watching. All right, so thank you, Joel. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, my name is Louis Musanje Michael, and I'm a software developer, web and mobile. Yeah, I'll tell you more about myself, but for now, I'm glad to see you guys all here on this call. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for this, for this time. <clears throat> you guys have had... Uh, Micah, Brenda, Esther, uh, Louis, and then I understand that right now you also know me. While at this point, at, at this point, we don't want to really waste much time. So we are going to have examples. We are going to have someone talk to us and show us what they have done with their programming, given the uh, and also tell us. What, what amount of time that they have spent doing those programs. The basis of this program is to inspire us into programming. It doesn't matter whether you're seven, it doesn't matter whether you're 18 or 60 or 25. As long as you have the desire for programming, you're good to go. So at this point, I'm going to invite Micah. Micah is going to come and talk to us. He will tell us about programming and what he has done also tell us his age, how long he has taken in programming, and where he sees himself, where he sees himself in the next year, in the next, uh, in the next about ten years or so in the future. So yeah, Micah, you're very much welcome. The floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, thank you, teacher. I want to say that right now I'm twelve years old. I'm in P6. I've been doing coding for about a year now. Uh, I started Python on the 30th of January. Uh, but I've been doing Scratch ever since April of last year. Uh, I have developed only one game in Scratch. No, not in Scratch, in Python. And... Hello, Mike, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Yes. Uh, sorry for that. Micah, do you have any other, any programs in, 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 in any of the languages that you're develop that you're, that you're studying right now? Pardon? Do you have any projects in, uh, in any of the languages that you're studying right now? You haven't told us about the languages that you study. Uh. I have Scratch and Python. Okay. Uh, Which is, I have I have some project. Okay. Do you, would you mind sharing sharing with us how uh, any of the projects that you have just to inspire the public? Yeah. 
it, which has taken me about um, a week to develop. It has been tough. I've been anxious and I finished it today. And I hope you enjoy it. it uh, it's saying that the host has disabled participant screen sharing. Okay, let me work on that just in a moment. Here you can see my my code. Here's my code from the beginning where we have to import Tato. I made this game using Tato. It's a module in Python. So let me run the code and we see what happens. I made a snake game which which most of you which most of you know. It's where there's a snake that eats food as it goes on and grows longer. I decided to create it to present here because it seemed like the easiest. So let me begin. Uh, so the game is still under some development. We'll let you know. Okay, Micah, thank you. Thank you very much for that. Wow. Uh, personally, I am, I am, uh, I am blown away by by what you can what you can come with. You said how long did you start doing Python? Hello? Uh, I've done Python for about seven weeks. Okay. I've done I Python know. for seven weeks. Seven weeks, that's just a few months away and you can come up with something that is this perfect. I am really, really blown away. Uh, at this point, I feel like I have a lot to say, but I will give the public the opportunity right now to first maybe ask you, uh, uh, maybe to talk to you and interact and maybe tell them, I, I'm, I'm very sure people have questions for you. I'm very sure people have questions for you, very many. So this time is dedicated to everyone out there who has a question for Micah anything about his game or even about programming. Uh, just in about five minutes, people can throw their questions and Michael will, can answer them. So someone here, yeah, just raise us, can you, add, can you add music to your background, to your, uh, to your game? Yes, I was thinking about adding music. Yes, I was thinking about adding some background music. Okay, so uh, I guess. I Hello, guess... Micah. Yes, please, Esther. Um, I wanted to ask you, what is the best thing that you like about Python? Uh, the thing I like about Python is that you can use some real words to just make a simple program, unlike something like C Sharp or C++, it's basically like Scratch, except that you use real words to communicate with a computer. Um, um, thank you, Micah, for your presentation. It's It's been quite intriguing. Uh, I have two questions for you. Number one, what do you like about programming? And then secondly, um, where do you sell? 
Do you intend to use with your land? Thank you. Pardon? You get the question. No, not really. Okay, I was saying thank you so much for the presentation. It was really nice. But I have one question. I have two questions for you. Number one, I was asking what you really like most about programming. Okay, that's the first question. And then the second one is, where do you see yourself having learned all this programming, you, you know, the code that you've learned, the different programming languages? Where do you see yourself in the future? How do you intend to use what you have learned? Thank you. Okay, I'm going to first you can use a you can use programming to make a phone or on a playstation an xbox a computer on anything uh you can use it on anything and it will get you a lot of money so i'm going to answer the second question now uh in the future i will i see myself using having so many games to have made and apps and will be will be very interesting and be one of the most one of the most uh, impressive in the world thank you Michael. wow uh thank you thank you everyone for, for asking the questions and then i also have a question so, Micah, uh, with all the experience in programming that you have, what what advice would you give for for a child there out there who is like you, and but for them they don't know about programming? What advice would you give for a beginner, to a beginner in, who is just fresh into programming, uh, given given your experiences and the challenges that you have gone through? Uh, programming, what I want to say is that you can do anything as long as you put your mind to it. You should have some passion for what you're going to do. And even if the project gets, even if the project kind of, even if the project fails, in, you can still make it work in one way or another. And that in programming, there's more than a way to solve any of them. I I can't agree more. I can't agree more. I thank you very much, Micah. I have just just in case there is anyone who has a question for him, this is the time. We don't want to leave any stone unturned. We don't want to leave your queries unanswered too. Is there anyone who has a question for Micah? Is about the presented. Mike, Mike, can you? Mike, can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, I was saying that. I I really don't don't know whether anyone else can hear you here, but just in case you can you you heard her, you can re-echo what she said. Oh, yes, yes, Esther. Um, I did not hear, that's what I'm saying. I also didn't hear. All right, uh, I think he has, he's having some network issues right there because uh, we can't see him. So at this time, 
I think I think you guys are really really motivated. I without wasting any more seconds, we are going to dive right into our next speaker and we are going to see what they have for us. This is a student who has who has been with us at Code Academy and they have done uh, good projects with us. So uh, Esther, the floor is yours right now. You can you can talk to us. Thank you. Okay. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Once again, my name is Esther Nakakande, and I'm 15 years old. Um, first, I would like to thank Micah. Thank you for your good presentation. Um, let's yeah. dive into this without wasting any time. I hope everyone is seeing my screen. Well, um, my project is on a platform called Scratch. So if you don't know what Scratch is, is what it looks like. It's like a free, it's like a free based like programming, let me say platform. I started doing Scratch last year, around August or July, one of the two. But I, I learned a lot of things that I hadn't like known before. And among those things was making games, animations. And right here I have this game. So this is a game that I like made last week. It's called, it, it doesn't have a specific name, but it's like two games in one. Let me show you. So the first game here is Alien Shooter, then there's another one called Hopper Catch. So you select the game that you want. You can turn off the sound if you don't want it. So here it tells you what the game is like all about. So well, the game, you're sup the aim of this game, you're supposed to kill like as many aliens as you can in under 45 minutes. So I'll show you. Well, the time moves really very fast. So the time really moves very fast. As you can see, my score is one. Well, there are some like adjustments that it needed, but I wanted to show you like what a game is like supposed to be all about. Like for example, in a normal game, you have the timer, the score, and the other things that you're supposed to be adding there. So I'm going to show you the second game. This one, which is like, it's called Hopper Catch. Again, it tells you like what you're supposed to do. So basically here, the aim of the game is supposed to get the grasshoppers and avoid the griffin. When it catches you, your health reduces. Health can also mean like your lives, the lives you have left. And like, as you see my like health is reducing every time the griffin catches me. So I'm supposed to avoid it and catch as many grasshoppers as I can, as I'm avoiding it. I have only four lives left according to this. So like my lives are over. So this is what I wanted to show you. These are like what I was doing. It, there are some adjustments that need to be added, but what I wanted to show you is like what what like Scratch is all about and what you can do. You can create something out of your imagination. Wow, 
Wow. Thank you. Thank you very much, Esther. I like your work. I am sure everyone everyone here does because it's really, really, really nice. But uh, <clears throat> I have I have a couple of questions for you. First is uh, how long you said how long did it take you to make that game? Um, well, actually, I did it. I started doing it on Tuesday afternoon, and I finished at around Thursday because, like, I was doing some work throughout the rest of the week. Yeah. Okay, so it looks like it looks like it is very easy for you to come up with, with a game, just as long as you have the idea with you. If you have any idea, yes, as long as you have the idea. That's what I'm saying. Okay, so we have we have uh, Micah says thank you in the comment section, and then there's another one called Malta says uh, well done Esther that's perfect. Wow, people really like your work. Me too. I actually like it so much. But uh, Esther, what do you have to tell people about computer programming? Now, apart from just the game alone and apart, apart, apart from scratch, what do you have to tell people about computer programming in general? Well, in my opinion, I'll start by saying computer programming is kind of interesting. Me, the best part that I liked about it was that I was able to interact with different people and like know their opinions. Because before I was only studying computers and when I started doing like these other things like Scratch, you know, when I was also introduced to picture blocks, I realized that you have to interact with other people like to know what they're, to know what they're able to do to add on on what you can do. So that was the best thing that I liked about it. Then when it comes to you, computer programming is really interesting and it's highly beneficial, especially like during this time when we were at home, like most of us had like nothing to do for a board. So this time it was really helpful, like in a way that you're able to learn something new. And also something else that I can say is that it can help you future wise in case like you're like planning to pursue, like let me say career in something computer related, this is beneficial and it will also help you like to spread it out to other people. So yeah, those are the main things that I can say to others. And if you're like young and you want to start this, like, let me say, you're like five, you're like six, seven, and you're like seeing this, it's not really that hard. You can do this. And also your age doesn't really matter. You can start as late as like, let me say 19, 18, but as long as you get the knowledge. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Esther, for that very, very, wonderful piece of advice as a as a as a computer person i know what it takes to come up with a with a project like that it takes it takes uh it takes commitment sleepless nights but much as you go through all that i am sure it is a sweet thing to see your project project work it is a sweet thing to see your project running uh, I'm sure, I'm sure Micah and Micah and Esther can witness on this. The moment you see that your project is not working, you wouldn't have sleep at all. You wouldn't, you wouldn't uh, think of anything apart from having that project up and running. So, uh, with all that being said, I can I encourage all of you that are here. Everyone, whether you you just a, a computer computer fan or you want to get started to programming, and you want to develop things, this is the time. This is the time. It doesn't matter whether you're 40. It doesn't matter whether you're 30. You can start right now, and you will not regret your time. I am sure you will not regret that. Yeah. So uh, with all that with all that being said. I would, we would like to have a word from, from we, would, we are going to have a word from a trainer that is not me. And then we shall also have a word from a parent 
I'm sure on this platform, we also have parents who are watching. And by the way, if you didn't know, we are live on YouTube, on Pod Academy's YouTube channel. So you can always go there and share, the, share it with other friends of yours. And also, if you want to review it, you can go to that page. You can go to our YouTube channel and review it, show it to someone and encourage them to start programming. So at this moment, I am going to invite a parent who is on this platform and they are and they are on Zoom right now and they are here to come and tell us, they just give us about in about five minutes, just to tell us about uh, to tell us about the event, tell us about programming and how and what you think about these two people and their prison and their projects. Yes, anyone? Um, thank you, Jewel. I don't know if you had a parent already or anyone can speak. No, it is open to anyone. It is open to any parent who is there. Uh, yeah, so you can speak. Okay, my name is Alice Mugisha, and I'm a mother to, to Maika Nangumia, uh, who, who that was our first presenter uh, of the SNAKE project. Uh, first, I would like to thank you so much, uh, the teachers, uh, for the good work that you're doing in trying to teach these children, you know, what you know, because it is one thing knowing something, but then it is another passing on information to the next generation. I really do not take it for granted. Um, I would like to appreciate the appropriator, Mr. Edward. Thank you so much for the work that you're doing and all the teachers, because I know it is not possible without them. Um, I have seen Micah grow through the process. Um, as a child, I found that he was so interested in technology and uh, I looked out for one of the best opportunities to see. Uh, at the time, I didn't really know what it is that he wanted because he likes fixing things, you know. He's a fixer of things. He likes to work with his hands. And so uh, IT, I think, was, you know, one of the best things that could suit him. And so when the call came out, uh, I saw the call, I think, about probably two years ago. But then you were still working with the NITA labs. And of course, getting him there was a problem. And so. COVID was a blessing in disguise because then you started the online programs and, and so it became a lot easier for us to connect. Uh, so I've seen him grow through, you know, the, the program, he started with Scratch and, you know, the games that he was doing were quite impressive. I've seen his imagination grow. Uh, I have seen his presentation skills grow. Sometimes I wonder where he got those skills from. I know that you're the ones who are responsible for imparting the presentation skills that he has. So I'd like to thank you so much. Uh, and then I've also seen his knowledge base grow because now he's not only a user of uh, technology, but then he can also innovate, you see. And uh, I know that the sky is the limit for him. He is going to go places with this. He is going to be able to learn so much. I have seen him uh, impart some of his skills to his siblings, which I really do appreciate. Uh, and so I know that uh, God has the best plan for him and is going to see him through this. And as long as there is something to learn from Code Academy, I would like to assure you teachers that we shall be at your doors knocking really hard. Teacher Jewel, thank you so much for Python that you have taught him. I know he worked with teacher Brenda and teacher Brenda taught him Scratch. Now, Teacher Jewel has also been very instrumental in Python, and I know we have really been on your neck these past days, but uh, we are grateful that it has come out the way it has. So we really do appreciate you, and uh, we know that the sky is the limit. Please keep doing what you're doing, and I know that the school is going to grow beyond your imagination, as long as God is on your side. So thank you very much, and God bless you. Thank you, thank you very much for those uh, sweet words. I <clears throat> I am melting. I must admit. Yeah, uh, you are you are really you are really uh, 
a blessing to us. Micah is really a blessing to everyone, not only Micah, but Esther and other students as well. We have also grown. Uh, it's not that it is only them who have grown or have learned things from us. We have also learned a lot from them. It is, it is almost like a win-win situation. They win, we win, and that is how it goes. So at this moment, I am going to invite uh, a trainer from Code Academy in Uganda, who is not me, another one, uh, to take us to talk to the students who are here and to the many who are watching us from YouTube. So uh, teacher Brenda, you're, much, you're very much welcome. The floor is yours, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, jo Teacher Joel. I'm so delighted uh, to talk uh, on the side of the trainers. And uh, thanks for students, that's Esther and Micah, and those who are there tuning in, watching in, and also the guest of honor, and also uh, Dr. Alice. Yeah, those words were really beautiful. Uh, as you're talking, I was just amazed and I was just, I'm just full of laughter, but thank you so much. And to our students, yeah, uh, I think I've been a trainer, trained both uh, Micah and Esther. Thank you, because uh, me, my job is to see uh, someone from us, uh, like, coming to join and they have the knowledge of programming, but then they progress the level of where they can sign their own projects or they can join projects or problems. That means by then becoming digital creators, not only digital consumers, as seen in most uh, children, like especially in Africa. Yeah, so uh, Esther and uh, Micah, well done. Yeah, that, uh, so they started with the visual programming, which was basically drag and drop. So uh, now uh, Micah is into uh, script programming. You type right, that's a real programming, which uh, some of us normally do. So. I'm proud that you joined us that while you joined us in that world of writing script. Uh, that's beautiful. And also, Esther, I'm surely believing that you uh, soon will join us and learn more because uh, with script, uh, you can do more. Yeah, while we do pass visual, because we get the fundamentals of programming and the same concept throughout, and they become very, very easy as you was building up and you continue with some other programming languages. And as for us also around there, please. It's a time for us. We, we all can do programming and we all can learn. It's just about when you don't know, it's just about passion and love. And we have lovely trainers, loving, caring. Yeah, trainers at Code Academy Uganda. They can train you, they can guide you. Yeah. And do well, thank you so much for the work you've done because uh, the director TikToks, we are grateful. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you very, th thank you very much, uh, Coach Brenda, for those words. Yeah, and uh, just to add more to what she said, programming is <clears throat> is what you make it. You make it fun. It is fun. If you don't take it serious, that is what it will be. So. Uh, really the ball is in your hands you can decide what to use it for you can decide to, to hide it or you can decide to play it uh for all the students that are here you know you are uh you're still probably below 18 below 17 below 9 below 19. some of us started programming at campus that was after we had gone through primary, secondary, and university. That's when we started. That's when we actually got serious with programming because even at university, someone can get out of there and get out of that place without without knowing anything to do with programming. And they only think about getting serious when they need a job. So if you are here and you're a student, and you have got the opportunity to do programming, you should really take it serious when you have the chance. People are paying 
too much money, too much money for just the work that Micah did or just the work that uh, that Esther did. Okay, so take every moment serious, regardless of whether you're doing Scratch or you're doing Python or you're doing web development or anything. Take every code serious. You see uh, these lines of code for, for the students that are here and they have done Scratch, these lines of code really look small. They look small, just a code that says move 10 steps, it's just one. But if you organize your codes correctly, you can get the money that you want, you can get the class that you want, and you can make the computer do anything that you want, okay? So all I'm trying to say is that uh, programming is what you make it. You make it nice, you make it beautiful, it will be beautiful. At the end of the day, God knows you can be the next Bill Gates. And it, it, has no, it has no limits, it has no limits. We see you said, yeah, Esther, Esther said that she started programming last year. I think that's the same thing with Micah. Last year and one year down the road, they can come up with a game like this. I am 100% sure that you guys, there are people who have completed campus and they cannot do the logic in your work. I am 100% sure. So that is about three years wasted at campus doing nothing, okay? Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't go to campus. No, I'm saying that you should go there, but these are skills that you're going to need everywhere, okay? Yeah, and it is best to learn them now such that when you get there, you just be adding on what you know, rather than being a first time on. I am not going to really talk much about that. I am not really going to take a longer time talking about programming. But uh, all I can say is that <clears throat> at Code Academy Uganda, we have all these courses at your disposal. You want to do, uh, you want to start, you get introduced to Python programming, we have courses for that. You want to get introduced to Scratch, we have courses for that. We also do artificial intelligence using crypto blocks. We also do web development. Uh, we also teach web development using uh, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Bootstrap, and PHP. But then also, we also develop. If you want a software, you want a website, everything, mention it to us. It wouldn't, make more, it wouldn't make sense for us to be teaching, yet we cannot practice what we preach. Okay, so without wasting more time, I am going to invite our guest of honor today, Mr. Mosange Lewis, to speak to us and give a word of encouragement to the students and the entire publication at this, po at this point. Yes, Mr. Lewis, the floor is yours. All right, so maybe I'll just turn off my first, but I don't know if you guys can see me. I want to just turn it off so we can just, uh, you probably see me. All right, so I'm happy to, you know, uh, just attend this and uh, just to hear what you guys are doing. It's brilliant work. Um, Micah and Esther and then the other students who are also watching from, uh, everywhere they're watching from. Um, I think Kodak Academy is uh, doing something brilliant to the society. I have not seen so many um, like tech hubs or uh, platforms that are giving such opportunities here in Uganda. So these guys must be one of those guys. Um, my name is Louis Musanja Michael. I'm a software developer. Uh, I am 31. I have done a lot of work. I have to just give you a brief um, uh, overview of where I come to, you know, to this stage of software development. I, you know, went to school like all of you guys do. Um, but then I think my first encounter with computers was uh, in uh, uh, P7 and it's pretty much a long time ago. I think that was around 2001, between there, I don't remember exactly. 
So I was in my vacation P7 and um, I just got to YMCA doing some courses there, you know, for P7 leavers. By then we didn't have like um, a lot of opportunities because we're not using operating systems that you are using today. There's only one operating system by then. I think it was called MS-DOS prompt. And with it, you basically, you had to just write commands. There was no clicking. And so it was basically a black screen. And if you needed to do anything, you just had to type and then things happen. So if you didn't know what you're typing, things don't happen. Um, and then after that, I went on to, you know, went to school, Mango. Um, I went in senior four, left, uh, actually left in senior six. Then I went to MOOC. In MOOC, I was given a course. I think I was given uh, arts in arts. And I didn't like it really much. I didn't, I hated it. But the fact that I wanted to just be at MOOC, I just went to MOOC, did the course, and I was always at the IT faculty because I loved computers. So I was never at my, <laughs> I was never at my uh, faculty at all. I would just go do, you know, uh, exams <laughs> and all that. But I was always at IT a faculty, and you, I would find people there that are pretty much very green about computers. And I was wondering how I am in arts and arts, and people who don't know anything to do with computers, I am, you know computer science and, and, in, and IT. So that usually bothered me a lot. So I think in my third year when I was about to finish, uh, so I got an opportunity with, um, with uh, some Indian um, schools called Aptech, where I actually met Joel. So these guys were carrying out an opportunity um, scholarship for, you know, for students. And I got this opportunity from IT faculty. I was like, okay, let me apply for this. Um, so I applied and, you know, went for the interview where so many people were like 400, but I decided, okay, let me just do this because I was very sure. Oh yeah. Okay. Just, just a minute. Let me do that. So someone wants a video on, let me just do that real quick. Okay. All right. So can you guys see me now? Perfect, right? Okay, cool. So yes, yeah, like I was saying, <clears throat> so I went to uptake. I did the, you know how everyone is. There's a scholarship. There's 400 people uh, who are doing that scholarship exam. And in your mind, you're like, I can't be this one person who's going to win this. So you just do it for the sake. And that was me. So I just went and like, mm, out of 400 plus people, and they're going to give one on scholarship, how can I even be a part of this, you know? <laughs> so, and the funny part is I was the last person in my batch to, to finish. It made me even quick the more, because like, ah, everyone, you, you know, would do exam in five, 10 minutes and leave. It was one hour and I didn't even finish in the one hour. But, you know, God is good. I, I, I managed to be among the top 10 that was chosen uh, to get the scholarship. Uh, out of the top 10, I was the, 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 the last, you know, I was the 10th. And yeah, my, so my picture is in the papers, you know, for advertisement, uptake, as, you know, these guys put a lot of money into those things. So ah, my, my mom sees the advertisement. She's like, okay, what next? You know, I just told her I'm leaving campus. She couldn't believe, <laughs> you know, and these are some of the choices you guys are going to also face, you know, uh, Micah and um, I think it's Esther, right? Uh, there, there, there's so many choices, especially in our country, in Uganda, you, there's so many things you're going to come across, uh, things uh, that are going to require you to make choices. Are you continuing programming or are you going to branch off and do something else? So if this is, if programming is actually your passion, me, I was, I was out, I said, I'm not going back to university, not for the bad, but the fact that I was, I was doing a course, which I, I really, uh, I, I wouldn't feel like it is me. So I was just doing it for the sake of finishing school, you know? So when I got this opportunity, I didn't want to waste more time. Uh, fast forward, I went uptake, you know, who are so involved in so many things, exhibitions and all that. One of the best people at uptake, uh, I loved it there. And my first encounter with programming was there, there was C, you know, <laughs> C programming. C programming is more like the one I told you about in my P7. It's also more like, 
a black screen, you just type stuff and you know, you see an output. There's not much visual you, you have there. So after C, we did Java. Java is also a programming language. Uh, it's not common nowadays because uh, there's JavaScript now and so many others. But back then it was Java and C sharp, you know? So if you, if you are doing Java, then probably you're doing C sharp. The good thing about Java, it was for all platforms. So you could write your code once and your Java code can run on a phone, it can run on a, the internet, it can run everywhere basically, you know? So it, it was referred to as code once and run everywhere, you know? And uh, most of the, the first phones that came in Uganda were running on Java, <laughs> you know? All the updates and everything, they were running on Java. So after Java, we did C Sharp. Now C Sharp does, Java was really like um, verbose, by verbos, I mean you had to write a lot of things to do a small thing, you know? So I quickly changed to C Sharp because C Sharp was very straightforward and it was so summarized. And uh, also that the fact that I, we were working by then on Windows applications, so it was easy for me. We could develop like desktop apps, bookkeeping apps, you know? So it was, it was really fun when you see, you know, you develop something and then something is on your screen and then all of a sudden, you can, you know, you see the output, you save stuff, there is a database, uh, it would really feel good. So after that, C Sharp, I got my first job before I left Aptek, uh, that is like four months to my graduation. I, I got my first job with a company called Crystal Clear, it's at King Fahad. Basically, these guys work with uh, microfinance and they develop a desktop application for accounting. So here I am, I have never done any accounting in my life, you know? And boom, I was there. So the first question was, you know, I also did the interview there. And because I was so good by then, uh, we went like four people and all those guys filled the interview. Evening, they called me back, you got the job. So I had to start on Monday, you, you can understand. Um, it wasn't really a very high paying job. My focus was not money by then. It was on, you know, getting the job. So, I didn't know how it looked like, you know, working in an environment. What do those guys do, the programmers, in a real world environment where they pay you? You understand? I think some of the, the, the thoughts that you have as such, you know, what do those guys do when they give you a job as a programmer? What do you do? And I had the same thoughts, you know? And then all of a sudden, uh, I go for the training, a full month of training in accounts because you couldn't start anything because if you didn't know accounts, there's no, <laughs> there's no way you could do anything. So here's the whole story. I go there and on my desk, the first day, uh, you know, you're required to do this. Uh, they give you a, a, a spreadsheet and you have tasks. So people report like what you call bugs. I don't know if you guys know bugs, uh, Micah and Esther. So bugs are like errors in a system. So they're always fixed using updates. So, you know, users report these bugs and then the company will fix the, the bugs and send an update that, you know, will fix the bug, you know? So if you have WhatsApp and something is wrong, WhatsApp will fix it. And then when you download the update on Play Store, that problem will be fixed. So that's what I'm talking about. So those bugs are usually the ones I started with. So my first almost full year, I was just fixing bugs. No new implementations, not developing anything new, just fixing that existing bugs. And it was, trust me, it was not easy at all. You know, I, we had, I, I would wonder what kind of jobs these guys do. I had work from January straight forward up to December. Work is given to you in January, but for the whole year, you can imagine. <laughs> so there is a lot of work uh, uh, and you should be prepared for that uh, because the industry you're in is really, really challenging. So be prepared, make your mind straight, make sure that you are focused because so many people are going to tell you, ah, it can't be done, you know, and you have to be ready to prove them wrong. Otherwise, it's easy to sink down and one day you do something, it fails. The next day you do something, it fails. You feel like, okay, maybe the other guy was right. That guy was right, I can't do this. And before you know it, you're going down the drain. But I can assure you that um, when you stay focused and you, you persist, trust me, with due time, there is that joy that comes when you fix something, you created something, uh, something had failed for such a long time and now here you are, you've solved it. Uh, there's joy in that moment, you know? Now, the thing I want to uh, advise you guys, you two guys, and um, probably the rest that are watching, 
is this industry is really huge. There's a lot of potential um, in the industry. So today you must be wondering, um, how am I going to gain from this? And your focus should also not be on being employed or getting a job, you know, uh, finishing this course and then go for a job, uh, interview and they give you a job. Uh, that's what everyone does, right? Don't follow that same direction. I think you guys, with the ability uh, you guys have, you should start thinking about creating your own stuff. Yeah, because now for us, our society, we haven't had that chance where the society teaches you to go out and create, you understand? Because for us, we've grown up in a society where, you know, you go to school, you, you after school, you look for a job and after the job, you get a family and that's it. But you should change that and make sure that you like you are the people that change this and make it a standard. Uh, you don't focus on because the beginning is really hard, you know, creating your own thing, marketing it out there is not easy at all. But I'm telling you, the joy that comes in the morning when things work out, uh, you you that, that's what separates you from everyone else, you know. So make sure you persist on whatever you're doing. Don't look for that job. I don't say don't look for it, but um, the thing is, you understand, because somehow we also get experience when we get employed. Uh, the experience I have right now is, you know, being employed by other people. And then here I am now, I'm a freelancer. I, I, I decide which work I want to work on. You know, no one is telling me wake up at this time, but slowly by slowly you get, uh, you, you get used to that life. And before you know it, you're the one who's employing other people and that's how companies start so i want you guys if there's anything to take from this talk it should be that you're going to be the one who creates that program that is going to change the world not the world maybe but it's gonna you know when you're developing these games they're not the games that you're developing in itself but the creativity that you create in your mind by creating those games is going to help you solve other problems you get because we also call it games, but at the end of the day, the ideas that you get, uh, the creativity that you create while you're creating those games is going to help you create a solution to a problem that is existing. Right now, I'm working on an app. Uh, I probably won't show it today, but maybe some other time, but I'm working on an app where you can like book a venues because it's a problem now. You need, you, you need to book a venue, you have to go through friends, a friend of a friend of a friend, who knows a venue, you know, that kind of hierarchy is long. By the time you get a venue, you don't even have a review. You might go there and then it's the worst experience you ever had, you get? So I, I discovered that problem and now I'm trying to see how can I make a solution by my skills, you know? So you guys are going to have uh, uh, apart from the rest of the generation or the rest of the population, you guys have an upper hand of being like creators. You have, you have, your knowledge cannot be taken away from you because it's in your mind. You, you understand? If you get employed, uh, let's say today you get employed by uh, someone else as a cleaner, tomorrow they can replace you immediately. You know, and the person will start working as if you know, they've been working for like a full year in that place. But as a developer, if they replace you, it will take them almost a full year for someone to settle in. You understand? That's the difference you guys have. So as you go out there to create new stuff, make sure that the first thing in your mind is not to get that job, but to create it. You get Because you have more power when you create stuff than when you get employed by someone else to develop their ideas. You get so I won't take really much time, but um, I'm really impressed by you guys, uh, Mika and Esther. Uh, the journey is really big and, you know, having also your mom support you is a legend because for us, the support was really minimal. And, you know, our parents want us to become doctors and, you know, lawyers, and yet our aspirations are really different. So you should really thank your parents for, you know, being there with you guys. Um, I wish you luck in your next journey and future. Uh, continue being focused, yeah, and the future will be bright. Yeah, that's all from me. Wow, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Lewis. I understand almost each one of us here has a question for you. Yeah, uh, but Esther says, 
she will remember you when you become the next Bill Gates. So uh, I really see people are seeing much potential in you. <laughs> I see potential in everyone in everyone who is here. Uh, I see potential in Esther. Yeah. I see the same person, potential in Micah. And uh, I will once again say that you guys have the time. Utilize your time well. By the time you get there, wow, only the sky is the image. So uh, I just I just want this to be the next this next session that we are going through to be uh, an open one. Some anyone can ask anything to Lewis because he's a resource. He's here. You don't always see him. Neither do I. Though we were at once well, once at the same campus, at the same place, the same school. Uh, yeah. So you can ask him anything regarding programming, and I'm sure he'll answer. Yes, anyone? Esther, you have a question for him? All right. Uh, yeah. I want to believe that he, in his talk, he talked about everything that he covered, everything that you would have asked. So thank you very much, Louis, for, for that wonderful talk. Ah, uh, really, we don't, want, we don't want this meeting to get to take this long, this much long. I understand it is a weekend and it's always uh, a busy day for most of you guys. So we are not planning to take you guys any longer than this. I just want to say to, to tell you that uh, we are always here. Code Academy is always here for you. You can reach out to us on Facebook, Code Academy Uganda, WhatsApp, uh, YouTube, send us a message. Uh, you can also reach, us, reach out to us on Twitter. We are there and we can always be, be, be ready to answer. For the community out there on YouTube, you're welcome to, to the Academy, regardless of whether you are in Uganda or not. We are not limited to, we are not li limited to proximity. So everything that, most of the things that we do are online. The, the, the classes are online. We are having students coming from India, from Nigeria, from Ghana, and they are studying with us. And for the Ghana community, the Nigerian community, hello, we recognize you. Yeah, you can always reply to us on, on YouTube. Someone is, is taking your, your messages. Any questions that you have, I'll be able to see them here. So at this point, uh, we are going to close the session. Thank you very much for coming. Everyone for watching, bye. Bye. bye.